Yes. So the download is completed here. We can zoom out and then you see the actual data. This this is not a uh, this is also kind of rendering of course, but it doesn't render tiles. So you get a lot of information. Actually, this shows every single node, every single polygon, um, everything is being shown here. So stuff you so don't see on a on a normal map. Um, let's go here for example like this one here um, you can see here that's a monitoring station I actually do not know exactly what it is but I was told it's it's to monitor water level um, you do not see this being rendered on um, on a regular map this and there's really literally millions of information here in the database which you don't see on normal rendered maps and um, that's why it's also sometimes a bit slow zooming in and out so this one here it has a fix me request that's a green valley PRG terminal green valley, green valley. oh yeah this is Balak, Balak Bak Santa Thomas proper terminal um, this is in the terminal area but it's not mapped within a route if you click for example Green Valley there's a jeep that has written on it Green Valley this actually has a route and you can open this route here then you see actually the connection it has and you see the stops now the names of the stops is always a tricky one um, there are no official names on the stops there are also no official stop numbers on the stops so the names usually I write here the um, what I hear people say to the driver if they want to stop somewhere I hear them telling Burak uh, 1 or Lakman Street or I hear him say, uh, saying to the driver, Santa Point Plaza. That's then what I use as a name for that stop. Basically, again, the concept of physical reality on the ground. Um, sometimes if people don't say anything, if I didn't hear them saying anything, sometimes they just say Parapu, then I just look on the map, what is the closest or the best description for that area so you know where you are if, if you want to go somewhere or if you use the search function in a uh, navigation software um, that you can find the nearest jeepney stop to that area um, yeah and then you can see here I add a lot of extra information like what is the charge how much do you pay what's the, the color coding we have color coding in Barrio um, the duration how long does it take to cheap? So when I record the GPX, I actually, um, from the GPX, it has timestamps, so I can actually see then, looking back at the GPX, how long did the Jeep actually travel. Um, yeah, and then from is the starting point, the name, that's, that's always, again, the concept of physical reality on the ground. I use the name that's written on the Jeep because that's the best physical reality we have. If a passenger looks for a line Green Valley, then on the Jeep it's also written Green Valley, and um, it, it doesn't matter if it officially has another name. Um, what you then can do is alternative names. So you can add here alt name, and you can write anything here. It really, you can say Paris Hilton for my part. If if that's really a local name, even if that's a fun name made up by locals, if you, locals would use that for this line, then that's a physical reality. Obviously, locals don't do that, so I'm going to delete this here. We don't want to upload nonsense. But I just want to point you out, um, there's the official name, and then there's always the physical reality name. And then there's a concept that uh, younger people or older people, they sometimes use different names. A uh, good example is MPC. MPC does not exist anymore. 
market today that's actually called Irish Vale, but everyone still says NPC, although it doesn't exist anymore. So um, in this case, the, the name is then NPC, and you can put as alt name Irishville. I didn't do that because no one is using that description, that today it's actually called Irishville. Um, but that's a valid, valid thing to do. If you map G-plines, you can add alt names. Um, important is this, the uh, network it belongs to. So we're in the Philippines, Cordillera, Banquet. Um, oh, this is actually wrong, I think. Bakken is buggy and up and get. Oh, I need to check that. If it goes to Tuba, if that's Tuba already, then it's Bengal. If that's still buggy, then it's only buggy. So that's that's the thing uh, which we uh, should be mindful of. Uh, how to tag this? Um, also, the Jeep is combined into two routes, namely one starts in the city and goes towards the Green Valley and the other one starts in Green Valley and goes back to Baguio. So it's one line but it's two routes and you combine that into a parent relation then. Um, no, discard the changes. What did I change here? No, there's nothing I should have changed here, right? Anyway, let's go here. How to map? That's written here on the Wikipedia side. This is generally for buses. When you look here and you scroll down on this page, you see all the information. How to tag something. It's quite a lot, so you've got to read through that. Uh, this is how to map routes. And... Um, this is then public tra transportation generally. It has all the information, not just about uh, roads, uh, for buses and jeeps, etc., but also for trains, underground, metropolitan systems, etc. And then you have to consider that there are some nuances. Obviously, in the Philippines, we have jeeps, but we don't have them in other countries. And for this, we have a uh, Filipino mapping convention. And this is the site for the public transportation in the Philippines. Um, so how do you map a jeep? There are some... In the past there was the concept of shared uh, taxi. And it's the tag shared taxi is, according to the convention, still being applied somewhere. I forgot already where that is because I now use presets in it itself. But here you can actually see a route for GDs, according to the convention, we map that as bus. And um, I think this has, because in the past it said here shared taxi, but we changed that at some point. <coughs> I think it has to do with the fact that today we use minibuses, or we are upgrading to minibuses, so the jeeps are phasing out and minibuses will come, which are also buses, of course. So probably that's why we uh, abandoned that console and now moved to buses. Anyway, everything for... Oh, here you still have to sh share taxi. Anything how to map it, it's basically described here. So generally, this information is applicable. That's, that's your basic information. That's the global information for OpenStreetMap. And where there is a slight deviation from that, where we have minor changes to what we do globally, that's where you look on the Filipino Convention for mapping, which then takes into account things like the tag like shared taxis, yes, which you would add to the buses, yes, on the stop position. Um, to make it myself easier, I actually have here presets for the Philippines. I actually have more presets local, but these are the ones I also put in line. Okay, you can add the stop position, the platform, waiting shelter, and this is for the route. This is for a stop area. Um, for example, this is a stop area, Shagam Street terminal area. Again, that's my name. I do not know the official name. It's just a descriptive name, Shagam Street 
terminal area. This is again according to the convention. Uh, these tags, it's just a name, that's the name I gave it myself. Um, so it's descriptive and people know what to do with that. Um, and here you see then all the terminals listed. The stop and the platform. So the stop is always on the road. Where on what part of the road the Jeep actually stops. And the terminal is always here at the side near the sidewalk, where do the people line up or queue up and um, well let's let's add the stop here for um, actually these are two right Santo Thomas and Balak Bak are still two different ones so what we're going to do is we add a jeep stop here specifically for Balak Bak and then we go to the Philippines and then we say here is the platform and here you get a, a, a preset screen which I made myself and um, here you then can say Balak Bak Terminal. Um, yeah, this is just people wait on the sidewalk, so there's nothing else to map here. And here you can also see the following only if no stop area exists, and this only if they are not mapped separately. Um, which means we do not need that, and also it, it's not available there, so. This is just basically add the name and then you see what it does, it automatically fills out the proper tags according to the Filipino mapping convention. Um, what we then do is we select here this area and we add here the platform to Palakbak GD terminal. Oh, that, I actually see it says PUG terminal. Okay, so we can, we added that, then we renamed that Balakbak PUG terminal. If you now go back into the area, you see the name is automatically updated. And then we add here the stop on the street. Again, the stop position, and we do the same Balakbak. PUG terminal. Uh, again, we can skip this because it will be integrated into the into the terminal area here. We select this one. We say always make sure you select the right one there. You put it to the south, and now you have to the stop. There is a rule that you put the stop above the platform, so let's do that. Oh, that's actually you see here. It's actually not done everywhere. So now we got the terminal, then, then we split here, we do splitting by hitting the P button, then we can split it into a segment. We select those two parts, we select the first part of the route, and then we go again to the presets, we go again to the Philippines, to the Jeepney, and now we click route. So at this point, you get here a large screen with a lot of information, and the from, then we simply use the convention which says we go from Baguio and we go to Balak Bak. In this case, it doesn't matter if the turning point is maybe a village or a Purok or whatever which is not named Balak Bak. The fact is on the Jeep is written Balak Bak. Um, that's simply what we do. So the from is the initial stop, which is done here, Balak Bak PUG terminal. The terminal stop, I do not know that name yet, so I just put um, end of line here. The color, which color do these have? Well, we have this color coding. I think I cannot change this right now. Uh, 
I do not right now remember what color it is. The opening hours I also don't know. That's usually what I do when I go to the dispatcher. I ask the dispatchers that. Um, the reference, we had Balak Bak. Again, what's written on the Jeep. And if it's a long name, keep it short. Uh, we, we don't want the description uh, to describe the whole road, of course. We just want the reference. The optional attributes here, I do not know that. That's not in the official data. Again, usually I get this information from dispatchers. Um, but we can add the network, which is in this case Philippines, Cordillera Administrative Region, and we remain in Baguio. Again, if the Jeep would even cross Tuba, Sablan, any place, even if just one or two hundred meters, then you would already have to write there Baguette, that's a convention. Um, but in this case it doesn't, it stays in Baguio. You can add here fix me, etc., which I do know. Um, color, operating hours, the convention says operating hours, we use actually the operating hours there. Um, then we have the charge, well we can enable the fee already, there is a fee. The charge, I do not know that. And the duration, those are the four things which are missing still. And then we can say new relation. <clears throat> so at this point you see you've got the first stop with the platform and the first part of the network of the route. And on this page, at this point you can select every single point and just append it here. Then you select the next and you append it here. Uh, I'm doing this now because I actually know how they drive, but you can also select several at a time. And you can just continue, as you know, the Jeep drives. We saw that on the map of the NQGIS here. So I'm, I'm just following here what's, what's pointed out here. This is the route the Jeep takes. Then it goes here, then it goes to the Garda Road. So because I reviewed it here, I don't need to look back because I already know what they did. Let's put that selection there. You can see it nicely lining up. If you see anywhere here where the line is broken, like two red dots suddenly, then something went wrong. Uh, for example, if I select this one first, and then I select that one, and I selected those two, look what happens now. You see, there's this connection here. The reason is because I selected these in the wrong order. I should have selected this one first and then that, but instead I selected that one first and then that one. Well, you can simply select those two now, or if it's more, you select more, and you just do reverse order, and then that's fixed. But let's continue adding this line. So we go you know, on the highway, and we just continue, oops. So selecting this, I do with the control. Oh, there I made a mistake. First that one, then that one. You can also use the shift, but the shift has the problem that you cannot deselect. And I really like to select and deselect, because I sometimes click wrong. So here again, oh no, I click right there. As you can see, the actual mapping, I use a lot of time to explain all the nuances, but the actual mapping goes really fast. And if I wouldn't be making a video here, I would do this in a few minutes, really. So mapping, once you get the hang of it, mapping goes so fast. Here, here I didn't anticipate there is a bridge, so it, you need to deselect this. Again, use the control, then you don't have a problem with deselecting. If you use the shift, you can click 1,000 times, and you never deselect. Um, yeah, here you can see the road goes all the way there to that point, which is at, um, 
at the GB turning point for the Bakakang line. So now we add this. Now we got the line completed. You say OK. Um, but the Jeep actually stopped somewhere here, so let's look on the map here in QGIS where the Jeep actually stops. Oh, it actually stops already here before it enters Bakakan, it stops. So it crosses this bridge. And here, there's supposedly a turning point. That's okay, we can do that. So what we're going to do here then, is we... We cut the road here, we do P, then we split it. And then this part of the road, which we added to the GP line, we say delete that. So we delete it from the relation. We don't actually del delete the road. The road is still there. And now you see... It's gone here. This is the end of the line. Um, what we can do is we can switch on the ping imagery and see where he would rotate. Well, I don't actually see here a turning point. So probably he will turn here. But that's assuming we don't do assumptions here. Fact is, this is the information we got, we stick to that information. And now we need to do the route back, which is actually quite easy. You just select the route, you select some part of the route, then it shows you the actual route. And um, select the relation. Then we got the relation selected here. And now we can say duplicate. Um, yeah, yeah, it uh, tells me this is rarely necessary, yes, we do that. This is just my uh, way to operate. And now I select this whole line, and I say reverse order. So now I got the same line back in reverse order, and then we go back here to the point where it actually changes this line. This is the point. Mm. Well, these are all the jeeps I added. So here we have Ballad Buck. Yo. Oh, let's see if, which one. And where's order? This is Shagam Street. So this is the right one. That means this one we need to change. Yeah, this is the one which goes back. And also, this one has to stop there and it starts at end of the line. That's where it starts and it stops at Balakbak PG terminal in Shagan Street. Okay. Um, as you can see when we select here where we know going back they take the route here towards PGH, they don't go back here over for the Garda Road. When you select this part, it highlights green here in the route list. So this is the last part which is still valid. So at this point I select everything later and I say delete. Then we select that one again. And now we actually select how the road continues. And he continues down here. And it goes here over the over the turning circle. Over two more. And then here they go over Kisa Road. That's added already. See if I selected everything right. Yes. And then we go on. For someone who is not familiar with Baguio, this might be the tricky part, but if you're familiar with Baguio, this is really easy. Because just just a look on the map in QGIS and you already know exactly how the Jeep is driving. Again, if, if you're not from Baguio, this is a tricky one. 
So, and now we're back at the POG terminal. And you can always verify that we did everything right by looking at this line. It's connected from beginning to the end. Um, yeah, so now we got this. This is now done properly, those two lines. So if you select this one here, you actually see it's now connected to two lines. Um, oh yeah, we need this is the one from Shagan Street, so that's the one which goes out of Bellevue. This is then the one, exactly, this one starts at Balakbar. So here we do Balakbar to Dublin. Okay. Um, then we need the master relation. So what we do is we select those two relations. We got them now selected here. And then we go again to presets. We go again to the Philippines, Jeepney, and we say a root master. The name, we always use the main name, which is that one. The reference, it, it takes this information from the, from the children. Um, the operator I do not know, um, the color opening hours I also don't know, but that's not important for the master relation anyway. And then we say new relation, as you see we now got the master relation, and we say OK. And basically you can upload it now and then you already got the cheap route, but there's of course a lot more information, you can add uh, more stops to it and like I said with the fix me it still says tells everyone that we miss uh, things like charge and duration but the most important thing is actually uh, yeah. the name of this end of the line, the turning point again, here, here I have no idea what the official name is I only see here is the stop, but I don't see actually names here line stops well if it has no name then I just name it sunny side because when you go take the jeep and you get out of the jeep you're here directly at sunny side from here obviously there is sunny side so that's what we're going to name this so we put here a stop we go again to presets jeep in stop position and we say sunny side, to sunny side, and in this case there is no stop area because I lack any other information, so here we say this is PH, Cordillera Administrative Region, and we are in Baguio. Apply, and then we click here this part of the road where we know the Jeep lines uh, roads are our uh, the plan and then we add here the sunny side and that one goes here that's then uh, stop and this one starts at Chagham Street so it starts there and stops there Balak sunny side that's the end okay and then we go again here now we select the other one from Balak Park back to Bark Hill and in this case the terminal is at the end of the line, it's all the way here. So the convention tells us then that this one, which is then the sunny side stop, it doesn't go here at the end, so it doesn't come here, but it's actually here at the beginning. Um, you can add information like stop, and then you can say entry only, or you can say exit only. Um, I usually leave it at stop because entry only and exit only it's not taken that seriously in Bakio. Again the Jeep drivers are flexible um, they are quite often not allowed to take you somewhere else than officially designated but they do that anyway um, if they have a reason for that. So if you're a young healthy person they might tell you no they do this from the window um, if you're a bit older or a person with disability or a pregnant woman, they will 100% take you. They will not tell you no. So, 
But again, this is not physical reality. Uh, this is, or it is physical reality, but it's always temporarily. It depends, and if it depends, then we don't map it. So now we got the jeeps correctly mapped. We got the beginning line. We got the end of the line. And what I usually do is, I myself, but also other people, they mapped um, waiting areas, jeepney stuff, like this one here. That's a waiting shed. I did not map that. Someone else did. And um, oh yeah, this happens sometimes. Let's do a refresh. Load all error tiles. Th this is again because the the servers are hosted in Europe. Sometimes you just have a bad connection. So I got I got to rely here on um, other mappers. That's the concept of OpenStreetMap. You got to rely on them that when they say this was a waiting shed, it, that it indeed is. Uh, the only difference what I do here is they say this is also a platform. Well, the shelter itself is not a platform. So what I'm doing is I delete this. I apply here my own presets, which are according to the convention. It had a bench. The service I do not know. I, uh, if I don't know any better, if I don't know if it actually is just a roof or if it also has a real building to wait, sometimes they do that. If I don't know that, then I just leave it at roof. If it's better, then it's better. If it's not better, then, well, I don't pretend it to be something more than it is. Whatever it is, it will definitely have a roof, right? So that's why I then map it as uh, roof. And what you now see, there's not public transportation here. It's now here. Why? Because we don't designate it as public transportation anymore. This is the designation for the shelter. It's a shelter, which is an amenity, and the shelter type is for public transportation. And the building itself, it's a roof. If someone else goes along there and figures out it's more than a roof, they can change that. Uh, you can see the color change. It was light blue before, uh, because it has the platform public transportation. We don't have that here anymore. You can add platform public transportation, but the platform might be there and it might be there and might be inside the waiting shelter. I do not know that. Um, also when the jeep goes back to Baguio, so this is only for dropping off, if the jeep goes back to Baguio, the platform is obviously on this side. You're not supposed, when the jeep stops on this side of the road, you must stop here, you're not supposed to get out of the jeep and just run over the street, right? You're supposed to wait here, let the jeep ride off, and then you see if the road is free for you to pass. So, in Europe this is done everywhere with, we have standards, everything is normed. Um, so it's very obvious in, in Europe you get a platform here on this side and a platform on that side. In Baguio they're working to that obviously. There's a lot being done currently on the improvement for pedestrians, for jeeps, etc. There's everywhere improvements, but they're not there yet. So in this case, we don't know. We don't know where the platform is. I can also not see it on the imagery, so I don't map that. What I do know is that the jeep will stop here. So we add here a stop position, and the stop position, again, I do not know the official name, if it has, I do not know that, because all these jeepney shelters here, they don't have names written on them, or any other definition, so otherwise we could put a reference to it, if it had a reference number, but they don't have reference numbers. Um, in Malaysia they have. I noticed when mapping in Malaysia, all the public transportation stop, they have uh, reference numbers. They don't always have names, but most of them do, but at least they always have a reference number. But in Baguio, we, we usually have nothing, so we've got to be a bit creative here. And to be creative, I look usually on the map, and I see here it says Central Balakbak Road. So that's what I'm going to do. Central Balakbak. I skipped the road, it's not a road. That's just the name of the stop. 
Since we have a shelter, I'm going to create an area, and then I do not fill in this one here. Um, that one is already selected, then we select that one, and then we do here the area, stop area, and the stop area we also call central ballot park, operator I do not know, and then ph car radio. So as you can see, I skipped this when adding the stop position, and I skipped it because I'm adding it here in the relationship already, in the, in the area relationship. All the information is filled in automatically by these presets. The only thing I've now got to do is select this Jeep road, which is the one from the terminal towards Sunnyside. When I select that stop and I add it to that one, between obviously, and then I select the other one from Balak Park to Baguio. And since there are only two available, obviously this one just comes in the middle. And now we added here the first stop I could find along the route. Which is already mapped. And again, the, this is the official data I got from the engineer's office. How oh, they also map this one here. So they put a stop here, which is also the same stop as the one I just added. Um, here is another stop, which is on the engineer's office information, which you can see here in QGIS. And this one is at a rehabilitation center. I did not put this stop here, so we're going to do this now, that's here. Yeah, as you can see, no one mapped here anything, so I do not know if there's a shelter here or not. That's part of the hospital. Okay, so I don't know that. So what we're then going to do in this case, we rely 100% on the information we got here from the engineer's office. And then we just add a stop here. Since there's nothing else to add a stop area relationship, but there's only a stop position, nothing else, because of that reason, we actually right now here the car. So this is just the convention of the Philippines. If there is a stop area, which is the case if we add more than just a stop position, then we add all the aspects which are additionally around that stop position, we add them into a relationship which we call stop area, then we enter this information network in the stop area and not in the single nodes or elements that are part of the stop area. But if there's only one element available, in this case the stop position itself, then we do enter this information. And here again, we got to use a name because I do not see that on the information in QGIS. So I don't see a name there. So the name here, I would just propose Roseville Rehabilitation Center. That's a stop position. And that's it. And then again, we go from Baguio to Balakbak. And this is now the stop from looking from the perspective of the city center, the Roseville Rehabilitation Center sits between the Balakbak POG terminal and central Balakbak. So while we selected that, we use this button here to put it below Balakbak POG terminal. So now it's between Balakbak central and POG terminal. When we now, however, change the direction, we look now from the perspective of Palakbak and we go back to the city. Um, then it comes again here between those two. Now, but now on top of Palakbak POG terminal. So not below Palakbak POG terminal. Above it we position it. So. It's very easy to make a mistake here, especially if you get here a huge list of stops. It's very easy to make a mistake. And especially if, if you're not from Baguio, then, it, then it's getting really critical. Um, like here, these lines to Sablan, or the lines to Itokon. 
if we map such jeepney lines that there are so many stops there where the jeep can stop if you don't know all the Puraks and all the CTOs and and all this all the names of the stop positions it's, it's really difficult then to figure it out um, yeah I'm now scouting for any more stop positions ah here at police precinct 10 is a stop position um, yeah, in this case you can see there's actually a uh, platform on that side and on that side. It's actually not really a platform, but it's a it's a fixed area where always everyone is waiting. So we select here again Balak Bak to bug you first which means this comes after the rose field, but before the Balakbak PUG terminal, then we select both of them, and we say that it goes before the Balakbak PUG terminal. Make sure that the stop is before the platform, and then we do the other direction again, Bagyu Balakbak. And now it goes here, and in this case we don't select that side of the road, but that side of the road. Uh, again, make sure stop is before platform. So I, at, at this base point, I showed a few examples. Um, then we just click here, upload. So we can add the other stops at a later point. It's, it's uh, taking a while to add all the stops, so we don't do that now. Uh, these are warnings I enabled in in uh, JOSM, you can skip something like similarly named ways, that's not important. Way and node near other highway. Okay, that has nothing to do with what we're doing now with the Jeeps, but I'm going to fix that mm -hmm. anyway right now. So I click cancel at this point, I open the warnings, and then because those are actually important, because if something ends somewhere in the middle of nowhere, it gives routing issues, that's a problem with routing. Oh yeah. So here the footway ends in the middle of nowhere. And um, actually here is a driveway which goes into this compound here. So we're actually going to do that. We add here this driveway which is designated, again we follow the Filipino mapping conventions, we say that's a service road, and the service road itself is then a driveway, that's it, and the footway itself, you can see on the satellite imagery, it goes like here, but here there's no more footway, but we still want to connect it, so how do we connect it, we connect it like this, and outside of that area and this one you can add here highway I should do it. footway and then you can designate the footway you can say that's a crossing some people say that's a crossing and it has uh, no markings um, actually I do not consider such areas crossings most of the time um, because it, it's quite confusing to mark that as a crossing. So what, what we can do is, we can add it as a link. Now every routing engine does not complain that you cannot walk from here to the street or from here to that one, and you cannot, from there you cannot go here to this road, but every routing engine now can use this link, this footway designated as a link, and the warning will be gone. Now go to the next problem. Oh, that's a piece of bar. Yeah, I've, I've, been, uh, I've been walking here also quite a few times. I actually cannot remember anything. I also do not know why it complains to me here about that. Well, 
so, since I don't see zebra here or here, this zebra marked by someone else here, to make sure the routing engine can use it, again, we do footway, footway, and, uh, no, sorry, I'm stupid, highway, footway, and then we say footway link, and because I'm not sure about that area, what I do then is fix me at proper pedestrian situation. No, not actually at, verify. Verify pedestrian infrastructure, infrastructure. So now I added something here to make sure that um, we don't get any problems there. And as you can see, when I now click Upload, those two warnings will be gone. Way and near other highway. We still have the similarly named ways. That's not a problem. But you see the second problem here. It's gone. And that one is a serious problem. In this case, I have my standard default where I get my source from. And then here I say adding another jeep line uh, dot line yeah that's about it oh and some warnings from the um, fixed So the thing is, we're, we're basically done now, except for the fact we can add more stops on the way to uh, to these lines. Uh, you can see here there's uh, issues with connecting the server this evening. That's okay, we just try it again and again. Sometimes you've got to try it a few times. But um, the, th the main thing is actually that um, changes, mistakes, errors, that's totally fine if you make them. Other people see the changes too. Over time, other people will add information. You can always add more cheap and stops later on. And uh, the main thing is always that it's available in the database, especially for the next generation, which is usually once a month. So this Jeep line, which we added now, this one here, that's the one we added. You won't see that here reflected on the public transportation map yet. It's not here for the very simple reason that they do not update that often. They update only every few months. And also here, oh, that's part of it will take a while to update these styles. It will not be reflected in the next. Um, next coming days um, yeah but that's basically how to add a jeep line using the information from QGIS I actually checked also other other lines here but I think most of them are not already Yeah, so here I actually see names with the uh, stops. Oh, where do these names come from? Because I don't see names anywhere else on, on the on the map, so I'm actually wondering why do I see the names there and not on the rest of the lines. But anyway, that's not part of this video. This video is about showing how to map a jeepney line, and that's what we did. And um, simply keep in mind, anything you add to the map, um, if you don't have all the information available, 
that is totally fine. Simply put a fix me there, and that's it. Someone else will do it for you, which usually is me then. 